Hi everyone, Steve Westman. Welcome to the Audiophile Roundtable. Happy New Year to everyone. Glad you can make it. Now, I want to bring on all of our guests here right out of the gate. There they all are. Guys, welcome to the Roundtable, our first one of 2024. How's it going? Patrick, talk to me. Yeah. Greetings. Uh, it's going great. Um, we're glad to be here on the first uh, panel of the year. And uh, I know. It's fun. I hope, hopefully I have a rant to start the, start the new year. Well, you, you promised me a prattle, so we'll get into that one. Mazzy, welcome. Happy New Year. I have no rant, but I have a special anniversary this week so i'll Ooh. get to that in a bit and i enjoyed your your wankers video thank you for <laughs> that one as usual um and i got a special announcement tim university of vinyl happy birthday you turned 42 years old yesterday so congratulations I'm gonna stick with like 49 for the next 49 week. 49 there you go happy birthday tim i ate 42 for breakfast jesus <laughs> 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 Mr. George Borden, welcome to the show. How was your New Year's? Did you make Did you make it to midnight? Is my question. I did. As a matter yeah. of fact, I did. There you go. And then we have we have Nathan Goss. He is, um, I guess, I don't know. He's all about. He's wanting to replicate Mazzy here. So if you yep. look at him, it's my welcome. disguise. For the happy New, new Year. year. Happy no, New no, Year. No, no, happy no, New no, Year, no, Mazzy. No. Mazzy Junior. <laughs> happy New Year. <laughs> there already is a Mazzy Junior. That copyright that infringement. There you go. Uh, Jefferson <laughs> to Blandia. How are you? Happy New Year. Thanks. Doing great. Nice to see you guys. Nice to see you. And then Michael T, Mr. T. He's hey, guys. On, he's been on the show before, but, uh, you know, with his work schedule, is not able to come on all, that often. But thank you for doing this today. Um, it's great to be back. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a while. So, we get, you know, yeah. hopefully hopefully uh, you have a lot, of, a lot of fun today. I know the title says 2024 Listening and Collecting Goals. We'll talk about that today. Mazzy's not doing a rant. We're doing a prattle. We might do a Nathan Vinyl vent. We might do a Two Blandia tantrum. We might do a, <laughs> a Jefferson. We, Jefferson, we, we might do a tantrum today. You promised me a possibility of that as well, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of narrowing it down to one, right? Well, it depends how depends on the flow today. But I got a few things. I, I I've got to give I've got a giveaway today, but it's not going to be that simple. I'm giving this away, and Nathan, it's still in the shrink. Just so you know, this is a brand new copy. As you can right. see, Bill Evans, um, this is the Kraft OJC AAA cut of the Bill Evans uh, Sunday at the Village Vanguard. I'm going to give it away to one of our viewers, but here's how this is going to work today. This does not get given away unless we get to at least 150 thumbs up on this video today while we're live. It's a free record. But basically, yeah. you're holding everyone hostage till we get enough. That's an excellent up. record, and that gives the double forty-five acoustic sounds a run for the money. I'm also maybe... I'm also paying for the shipping to send it to this, and to that the might even links. eclipse it. So, click that click that uh, thumbs up button now, and then I want to see people in, in, in and anyone that I see in comments throughout the hour. I'll pick. I'll actually get the birthday boy to pick someone from the audience today. Once we get to 150 uh, thumbs up, to give this record away and. We'll go from there. So this is a free free record. This is an incredible cut, by the way, guys. If you don't own it, maybe you'll win it today. We'll see. We'll see if we get to 150 thumbs up. I'm not. I'm not giving. I'm just not going to give it away. I mean, you got to earn it, right? Nothing's nothing's free. There it is. Good right. cut. So a couple things. Um, <clears throat> anything you guys want to discuss? I got a couple things I want to talk about. But uh, any you know any good you know any good experiences over the Christmas time? Any live concerts? Any spin? spins that you guys want to talk about I'd, I'd be curious to know uh i just i just want to shout out for a concert i saw um adrian blue and jerry harrison doing the whole um remain in light plus a bunch of other talking head songs plus some of nice. their individual stuff it was, like, it was a great band they had like 12 people on stage and it was remain in light like you know it but it was also kind of reinterpreted and offered up fresh and every single person on stage was having a blast. So if that tour gets near you and you're remotely a Talking Heads fan, I can't recommend it enough. We did that for uh, 1230 and then stayed in on the couch on the New Year's Eve. So shout out to that show. Nice. Right. Thank you. Cool. I, I want to I say something else awesome <clears throat> because none of us, it's a good possibility none of us would be here today. If it wasn't for this record, I bought with my mother at Stanford Shopping Center 60 years ago this week. I remember that because it was the week before the Ed Sullivan Show, The Beatles, and it was after New Year's. And this is my copy 
I want to hold your hand was released the end of, of December of 63. But this week, this is the copy I got 60 years ago today. And if it wasn't for this and subsequent things that happened, we may not even be here in this capacity. So I'm going to, I just think that's an important date, 1964 to 2024. Or we might be here with half as few, half as many channels on the vinyl community. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hoffman forms would be like half yeah. too, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw the tra I saw the Trans Siberian Orchestra for like the third time. So and and I, they always deliver. Al Petrelli is an amazing guitar player, um, really good singer. So if, if you guys don't go watch Trans Siberian Orchestra, I highly recommend them because they, they are always put on a good show with great and great pyrotechnics. And, and Patrick, that comes from your love of sabotage, right? I mean, originally. Yes, I mean, I, I, I'm a huge I, I was a huge sabotage fan. Al Petrelli was an Alice, Alice Cooper as well, and um, and so they they got some great singers. They've got Jeff Scott Soto, who's played with everybody. They got the the girl who sings for a band called Plush that's really really good. Her name's a uh, uh, Mariah Formica, who's excellent. Excellent. That vocalist. thing is such a cash cow. My friend's husband's oh, yeah. great singer was with it for one season about 15 years ago. He got 10 grand a week on that tour. Well, they have an East Coast and a West Coast version. So they, oh, they, they? They, oh, they, yeah, they, they, they run two at a time, you know, and, and some of the, they, they'll do two shows here a night, a day. Wow. So yeah. Wow. They, is, they is, there a, is there a good version out there of Dead Winter Dead by Sabotage, that record? Actually, that's I think. Oh, that's the one that has a that has a. a oh God, the, 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 that you see. Uh, it's not. It's not all that you see. I actually just bought it, and and uh, there's a reissue, and it doesn't sound bad, but you know, it's it's not phenomenal. Yeah. Just remind everyone, we've got 99 watching right now. If you want a free copy of this, click that thumbs up to get to 150, and then we'll give one away. So get, I want to see that happen. A couple things, guys. Um, I'll start this one. You got, I think you'll like this one. This is kind of fun. You know, I do this little segment here. You'll see this here. Things that make <laughs> you go, hmm. So now, now you mentioned the Beatles, Mazzy. And so this is interesting. You see this fellow here. His name is John Coltrane. I'm sure you recognize him. There's a little bit of a Beatles connection between John Coltrane and the Beatles. Would you like to learn about it? Well, there's always a Beatles connection. You can make it. It's like kind of Kevin Bacon. You can make like that, right? So here's John Coltrane. So I don't know if you know this, but a number. First of all, he's got a son named Ravi Coltrane, who was, of course, named after Ravi Shankar, who, of course, helped George Harrison learn to play the sitar. So there's there is number one. So I thought that was a kind of an interesting thing. So then number two is this. So John Lennon, unfortunately, passed away at 40 years old. John Coltrane also passed away at 40 years old. So there's another link there. And then there's even a crazier link than this. So af after Coltrane died, I mean, they, he's now a saint of, a, of, the, of the African Orthodox Church in Mazzi. You'll recognize this here. Here's his church, the St. John Coltrane Church. You see that there? And it's sort of in the Marina, Mar the Marina oh, District there, right? There, uh, yeah. yeah. So you see that there. He's now a saint. <clears throat> so what they do is they church, have... A, Oh, nice. So they have a, they have a feast every single year for John Coltrane. OK, and here's and here's the here's the third. Here's the third Beatles connection. That feast happens every December the 8th. And that's when Lennon died. There you go. Things and John Coltrane was on ABC Records and my first label I ever worked with was ABC Records. And I Impulse was one of my labels that I promoted. Yeah. The Beatle Collector. So there you go. There's always a connection with the oh, Beatles and everyone else. Yeah. So even John, John Coltrane there. I thought you guys would like that. And then lastly, I got this sent to me. Um, this is a record by a fellow by the name of Scott Matthews out of the UK. Uh, it was mastered and cut by uh, Miles Scholl. It's called Scott Matthews' Restless Lullabies. You guys like Nick Drake? Sort of sounds like Nick Drake. Very haunting um, vocals, very engaged vocals. Um, it's a great record. So if you want to pick it up on his website, I love supporting local guys here at scottmatthews.com dot uk um and hopefully i've invited him on the round table at one point as well so hopefully he can come on and talk more about his experience that'll be kind of fun so scott matthews dot uk and the album is called uh restless lullabies and it's on like a like a marble sort of uh, um pressing and it was pressed in denmark if you guys are familiar with the danish the danish uh, pressings that are out there so yeah 
So you guys want to start 2024 listing and collecting goals. Um, what are your thoughts? I mean, are you going to buy less vinyl, more vinyl, start actually listening to the stuff that you have? Like, where are you at with everything? I want to start with Nathan. Nathan's laughing, so he probably knows he probably knows what he's going to be doing with his people. <laughs> no, I, I, just, I just thought it was funny because I was sitting there thinking there's so much stuff that what all of us probably have just piled up that we haven't even gotten through. And uh, and then at, at, at the same time, on the horizon are all these releases that we're already waiting for, looking forward to, anticipating, whatever the case may be. Me personally, I've just gotten more selective, I guess. Which I don't think it's a bad thing. You know, I think when you're selective, you make more, you know, pinpoint, I guess, purchases on things that, that really kind of catch your eye. And I like the fact that, like, right now, you don't have to uh, have – everything like at your fingertips right that second that it comes out and or else you don't get a copy right i think all of right. us have the fomo out. fomo <laughs> yeah like i think i'm sure all of us have probably missed out on things because we weren't willing to like play that game right and i i feel like right now and i was actually thinking about this this afternoon i was thinking five thousand seems to be the uh, about the right quantity for a release to be on, in that limited uh sort of category where it feels like there's still enough to go around but it's still somewhat limited when you start getting north of five thousand you know like in the ten and twenty thousand like some of the uhqr numbers they're going to be around forever i mean like they're yeah. not going away any, anytime soon but you start dipping below that five thousand threshold and you start talking about things being released at a 3,000 quantity, especially whenever these are worldwide numbers, 3,000 for the world, that's pretty limited. So anything below 3,000 really starts getting limited. Um, and so that's just where my mind has been recently is thinking more in terms of looking at the production numbers and whether it's something that is a must have now or whether it can wait and get it further on down the road. So I, I think selective is just my go-to word i think for uh, 2024 and that's what rhino's doing right with their high fidelity releases i mean they're going to be limited to 5000 but not like if it goes over 5000 they will actually uh, press more depending on demand so i like that strategy as well and just to remind folks that are watching we're doing a release of the next two rhino high fidelity um uh, albums on uh, i guess monday january 8th at one o'clock so watch for that as well um, George, what are your thoughts? I mean, where are you going with your collection this year? Are you going to be listening more, buying more? Uh, what are you doing? I'm going to be buying less, uh, listening more, and making uh, more. I'm going to make. Eight? I'm going to make music uh, this year for the first uh, quarter of the year. I'm going to try to force out some sort of uh, musical statement cool. um, and see what happens. Have you got stuff lined up yet? Or are you sort of working on that? Yeah, every you know, every day now. I, I've for some reason uh, I've been attracted to playing every day, and every day I play something new comes out. So uh, I think uh, it's time to turn on the Pro Tools and start capturing them. And uh, you know, the problem is I got I got to set up a drum kit out here in the living room in order to. <laughs> dog doesn't dog doesn't like that. The dog doesn't like when there's a drum set in the living room because it's the only place the dog can move around. So, uh, <laughs> so this gonna take a, is this gonna is a, is a bed too, and he goes to lay in it? Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> the dog so, hides when the drums come in. George, why would this take a quarter of a year when the Beatles recorded their first album in one day? I'm curious about that. because I'm not remotely as talented as even Ringo, okay. uh, or any of the Beatles. Even I'm not even as good as Pete Best. The second album took even longer, too. By the way, yeah. are you not the best drummer in your house? <laughs> um, it depends. I mean, I, the dog one time, uh, you know, ran across and it sounded cool. Nice we're, tw we're 20 away 20 we're at 128 viewers so if you guys want to hit the thumbs up to win a record today here it is i need a 150 thumbs up get her done all right michael t i haven't talked to us what are yeah, you doing about so, your collection let's see so i'd say since the late summer i've really really backed off on purchasing audio audio file reissues uh, i've bought two recently <laughs> i bought i bought the bad company self-titled ap75 and I also bought the Tony Bennett, Bill Evans, AAA, Kevin Gray reissue. 
and that one sounds fantastic. I, I, ju I just ordered really that. Good. I just ordered yeah, that one. Good. Yeah. And the, the funny thing is, uh, New Year's Eve, I went to Portland. Just I decided to go record shopping because I live in Seattle. And uh, one of the stores had a sealed copy for six bucks. They didn't know what it was worth. So I just I just picked up a second one too, and I'll give to a friend <laughs> nice. or something. But um, yeah, I've I've really backed up backed off on buying audio quote unquote audio file records. And there's some that, uh, for instance, Steely Dan. I haven't bought Asia yet. I've been thinking about buying the UHQR, but I have an original AB, and a lot of reviews are like the AB is like a nine out of ten if the UHQR is a ten out of ten. And I think to myself, nine out of ten. Do I like that record enough to spend the one fifty on it or not? Um, and I've also, like, like, like you were mentioning earlier, I've been going back. I'm, I'm really backlogged on a lot of used records I've purchased over the summer. Uh, so I'm trying to go catch up on listening to stuff. And uh, I've kind of gone down a few different paths. I've been trying to hunt down more Deutsche Gramophone Tulip, the ones that have the tulip all around the rim, the, the earlier 60s tube cut recordings that sound great. So I've just gone in different directions. Yeah. Jefferson. Um, yeah, I, similar story with me. I'm going to be backing off on uh, a lot of the at least audiophile pre-orders. Um, that you know, full disclosure, I I bought the Atlantic 75 series, and I'm all in on the uh, the Steely Dan. Um, but uh, in terms of like my overall buying habits, I'm going to be going out into the wild more and dealing with specific mm -hmm. dealers because I'm kind of like on a year on an original kit right and you know if not the original you know first two or three years of the pressing just because when they're clean nine times out of ten they best an original or best a repress of course there's no hard and fast rule but anyway blah 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 <laughs> basically want to say that i'm not going to be buying a lot of retail stuff as much as i used to i mean i'll buy certain things and if i hear about something that's really really good then i'll stick it out but to me, um, the originals are kind of where the value, not so much the value, but the sound quality is now. And like George has alluded to the Beatles several times, um, we're not going to be able to get specific mixes uh, in the future, especially for more popular bands. And so um, I think that's something that we're not going to realize until they're gone. So that's at least where I'm focused at, if that makes sense. It does, Tim. Yeah. Um, kind of a similar story. I'm I'm gonna cut back on pre-orders of uh, audio file pressings. I I am um, I'm you know I'm very interested in the next three Steely Dan UHQRs. I am gonna wait though. I'm not gonna pre-order. I'm a, I want to wait and see how they sound. Um, but these are I think three to more more interesting titles katie lied i'm interested to see what they're gonna be able to do with that recording and that's the thing i mean when i had steve hoffman on that's one of the questions that i asked him because he did master katie lied for cd back in the early 80s that's the mofi there i have the mofi um and i asked I, him about I, the whole I, I deep, deep... obliterated it this is the worst oh, that's funny. version i don't want to encourage anyone to get it by any means yeah Oh, but man, I mean, that's awesome. But he, he's under the he's under the impression with Bernie having the DBX decoder and whatnot that it should sound pretty good, from what I. Yeah, so I'm interested. It'll be in interesting those. to see. That'll be the yeah. test. Um, on the you know on the used front, uh, I I'd say most of my purchases over the last three years have been walking into into used shops, and mm -hmm. I used to be a little more uh carefree and spontaneous and and uh i think what was the word i heard earlier i'm i'm going to be a little more selective so i have an example i, I was out yesterday i had a little bit of time <laughs> and uh <coughs> on my birthday so i'm all about now just kind of filling holes or doing upgrades um mm -hmm. i needed a uk pressing of uh drums and wires xtc and was able to find one um, at a really good price. So that's, you know, that's an example, uh, number one. And then number two, I did a, a video recently. I was focused on Sheffield Lab Matrix, which was a plating facility back in the 80s. Doug Sack started it. And if you see records with SLM, there's a ton of them. And they were all, a lot of them were either pressed at Allied or Specialty. One of those titles that sounds amazing, which is a master disc RL, 
there's only one variant out there that has RL in the dead wax of uh, Life's Rich Pageant, one of my favorite REM albums. And after I did the video, someone had commented on, oh, yeah, another one is Life's Rich Pageant. Do you have that? And I went and pulled mine. It was a Columbia House club pressing. And um, being the snob that I am, I was put this on the hit list, and I found it yesterday. So a couple examples right there of uh, trying to be more selective, a little more focused, less pre-orders on the audio file front, maybe wait for reviews to come in from people I trust, and then pull the trigger. Patrick. You know, I have to say it warms my heart as somebody who has banged the original drum for God knows how long to see on an audiophile show. So many people say they're going to go dig into the originals. It just absolutely makes makes my my year sound ama feel amazing. So kudos are those, to are those, everyone. Are those, are those tears? Are those tears of happiness? Yes, I'm, oh. I'm actually. I'm, I'm tearing up here. Okay, get, Miss, get, get Mrs. Get Mrs. Peavy the hell to get you some tissue there, Patrick. Yeah. Use Tito, the toilet paper tissue. next to you. Yeah, right so there. yeah, yeah. So so toilet yeah, paper. I got plenty right there. But but yeah, no, seriously. I mean, I mean, literally. I mean that 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 just makes me feel wonderful. You know, not that I mean, I'm all in on the Atlantic seventy five zeros. All the ones I've had, except for maybe <laughs> Bad Company, have been you know the Bad Company is good, but I don't think it's better than the UK. But all the ones that I that I've heard so far to me sounds phenomenal. I mean, absolutely mm -hmm. stellar. You know, so Lamb Light Down on Broadway was a was a revelation for me because I'm not a big fan of Lamb Light Down on Broadway. But actually, this this pressing actually made me get into the music a little bit more. This is an instance where a really good mastering can make a difference and make you like something better. You know, like I said, yep. I'm not a big Lamb fan, but I remember listening to it. I I I played three-fourths of it on, on a live stream for YouTube did the, did the honors of shutting me down. And everyone was like saying, wow, I'm just really getting into this. And so it can make a difference. Um, yeah. I'm I, I, I'm always selective. I try to be selective now with, with pre-orders like everybody else is. You know, I'm not jumping on everything. I'm not, you know, going, I got to get this, you know. But one mm -hmm. thing I did, uh, I was on Facebook two days ago, and somebody posted this in the marketplace. $10. Nice. <laughs> An original Albert, well, it's the second press. Albert, Australian copy of ACDC, Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. So this Shoot. is the stuff I'm looking for right here. So that's what I'm, wow. that's what I'm going after. But you know. but you got you guys are also located near larger cities where I don't think you realize how much of a luxury it is to get to good shops that have that kind of material to find originals. When you live in the middle of nowhere like I do, you don't have that luxury. So reissues are oftentimes what you have to look for because you can't you know go out in the wild and find but you know, you know Nathan, uh, you're absolutely correct because i make this analogy all the time is that i lived in, in a very remote part of texas and I, someone like mazzy and or P, anybody that lives in like new york or boston was like going i saw this show on wednesday i saw this show on thursday i saw that show i saw this show and i'm like going dude i had to drive six hours just to see a concert literally <laughs> you know so so i get what you're saying yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And then obviously to find them in good condition for a reasonable price that, you know, and but with the internet now you can order online. You can actually, I mean, the internet is, has made, you know, like, like anything's attainable, you know, if yeah. you really, if you find the right seller and, and are willing to pay the price and get a good deal, you know, as sure. opposed to back in the day where you had to like get gold mine and, and fill out those freaking like those auctions where you'd mail in your bids, you know, and you'd hope 30 oh, days no, later no. that you'd win and that they'd send you the record. You know, right. so yeah. Yeah. It's also cool, like, you know, just trying to find like the unique stuff, like Michael T was saying, like the tulip, you know, from the Deutsche Gramophone series, like whenever there's something that you're like have like a very laser focused niche kind of thing that you're looking yeah. for. I mean, there's kind of a uh you know, an eclectic nature to to seeking out things that are kind of in that uh unique unique uh, area as well. So yeah. I'm just looking there's for stuff that I, I, I've never seen before. I'm also looking at like uh, album covers again. I'm, I'm also just, you know, taking a chance on cheap records and, you know, like whether yeah. it's a power pop or some hard rock. I'm, I'm just like looking at stuff like going, you know, or, or if there's a connection between like he played in such a band or this guy produced it, you know, it's stuff that I'm not familiar with. I'll take a chance on it. That's what I'm doing more personally. What I'm doing more of is trying that yeah. kind of stuff. Can I just in my, yeah, um, go. Um, the Atlantic 75 series is a series that I think I may buy one, two, three at the most. Mm -hmm. I have 
basically gone off on uh, 45 RPM double records. Uh, I understand uh, they're marginally better in some cases and great all analog. But even if I don't have original of the 60s and 70s, I have second or third press and some that sound very good. And I, and if I if there's a record that I don't play more than three times a year, like as much as I love selling them by the pound and um, uh, lamb, I have the early copies of those. I don't play them more than uh, two or three times a year. I don't even play them that much. So I'm certainly not going to buy a, a, a double 45 to get that just to have it again. Uh, that type of thing. The ones I'm going to keep up with, I'm going to keep up on most. I, I buy probably 95% of the tone poets, unless I already have it on another uh, another version. But to me, those are definitive things of records that I most of them I don't have. Um, I'm going to jump in all, for the most part, on Sam Records. I tell you, I got this record the last day of the year, this Sam record, this Sahib uh, Sheehab. And I would say... Um, if I had gotten this in time for my best, this probably would have been my number one jazz album of last year. Sam Records to me is um, uh, one of the better uh, labels and it's music that I would never, you can't get here. It's not like it's a reissue of something. No, it's a Danish, in this case, it's a Danish release. Uh, so no way are you gonna know it. Um, and I'm gonna buy, I buy new music, new bands, new artists, so I don't need to get you know, fourth, fifth copies of a Genesis record or a Phil Collins record or, or even, a, well, I'm fortunate to have all the multi Beatle records, originals on those. I can't think of any artist. There might be a couple. There's a couple in the Rhino uh, releases. There's a couple here and there that come out. I did get uh, the UHQR of something else, Double 45, because that is my all-time favorite jazz album. So that's one of my... The one, that, the, the one step. The, I'm sorry, the one, oh, right, the one, sorry, Chad, it wasn't you. Um, but that's one of, no, that's, no, I'm just saying, I, I gave the analog productions the credit there, and it was a MoFi. I think it's amazing sounding record, and it's my favorite jazz record. So I, you know, I will compromise myself with a 45, although uh, the classic version of that is quite good. And to be I, fair, Mazzy, do you or do you not own a t-shirt that says, fuck Phil Collins? Yeah, and that was sent to me as a gift by. <laughs> no, no, it says no. It says it doesn't say that. It says Gabriel Phil fucking Con Collins. Okay, sorry. You're yeah, like, okay, sorry. hey, it's man, it's Phil fucking Collins, man. It's a positive. Uh, but oh, Nick yeah. Rudo, a viewer, uh, sent that to me. It was a gift. So anyway, so uh, more new music, more new bands, new artists, and uh, we don't talk about new music much around here. It's really unfortunate. Old people not talking about new artists, new bands. Yeah. A lot of great new well, records came out last yeah. year. And I, like I said, at the top, I had you know talked about uh, you know, this guy here, uh, Scott Matthews. I mean, some great stuff, some great artists, some you know, up and coming That's artists. That's part of my well, rant, by you know? the way. So, yeah. Was that was that your was that your <laughs> going to be that, that was going to be your this is going to be no 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 no. So, so oh. I, I, the, 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 this is kind of kind of a nice would be a nice segue into my rant okay. if you wanted to go there. Well, we're going to. I want to hear from George right away, though, too. But we're at 155 viewers. I want 150 thumbs up. I'm giving you one of these. Triple A cut, Kevin Gray. Get the thumbs up, guys. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Thumbs up. And then before before I get to George, though, so we talk a lot about Steely Dan. So does anyone is anyone familiar with this band, Spyro Gyra? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. So it's okay, but if you basically if you listen to it, it's basically it's 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 um it's just it's, it's just M -O -R steely pop jazz. it's it's steely dan without 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 the lyrics it's yeah. pretty much sounds it's a lot a like steely dan yeah. those were very popular M O R pop jazz yes. and this is yeah. my nautilus cut and this was cut by jack hunt back in i think 19 early 1980s smooth, original yeah. it's very <laughs> smooth jazz i mean it's pretty much if you close your eyes you probably could even you could probably trick yourself and say it was steely dan so uh, it's, i got it's, I, Jay, it's Jay beckenstein so. it's almost like the yeah. sighting of those three blind yeah. mice uh, Japanese. i got i got this down the road mazzy at the record store we went to for 20 dollars canadian i thought and it's a nautilus kind of that's a great deal i'm so glad that you paid that and then well 20 dollars <laughs> canadian is like free us and like because these jazz records no one ever listens deal. to them so like i don't know canadian is oh. like paying me ten dollars yeah you, you know, Carnival's you know, a pretty good album, by them, by the way. Yeah. Well, here's another. Here's another bargain way to get Steely Dan. So I went back and re-listened recently to these two. Tell me the name so everyone who's oh, yeah. listening only. So it's 
two against nature. Thank you. So in light of the UHQR releases over the past year, and I actually think that both of those sound better than any of the UHQRs and just in terms of sonic performance and sound and everything like that. So those are like 60 a piece instead of 150 or whatever. So if you want Steely Dan on a budget, that's the way to go. Because those are $60. Bingo. Bingo. Why does any double 45 record have to be more than 45, uh, more than $60? Tell me. Convince me. Yeah. So anyway, just wanted to point that out. Uh, and those are yeah, those are really Steely Dan albums. Out. They <laughs> thumb their nose up at those last two Steely <laughs> Dan titles. They're great. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, 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 okay. I, I'll take your word for it. And I've listened to both of them, but to me, the first five or six, whatever, through Gaucho Show are far, far above it. If you're into Steely Dan, and well, they're Lakers better records musically. Like, they're better records yeah. musically, definitely. Right. I'm with yes. you. I'm with you, Jefferson, yeah. on that. I'm definitely with you on that one. I mean, I mean, Music I, but, but I, you're talking I musically, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah musically yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 So yeah. if the yeah. other five were just like those, sixty dollars double. Wouldn't yeah, that no, be great? I, I'm not. I'm not arguing Wouldn't that with be you, great? Desi. I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm not I know. a fan of the last. Two that albums. tells you how much how, how much well Steely Dan can't value those and, records that they'd sell them for sixty, and the other ones not for sixty. So it, it's Steely Dan. It's the Steely Dan negotiated those for cheaper than the other ones, I guess, because they didn't they, they didn't value them that much either. Well, those were well, Warner yeah. Brothers. I mean, the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. We different the owners. Of of, stuff is, go ahead. Sorry, guys. No, just those were Warner Brothers. The last two different labels. I'm pretty, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure Donald yeah, Fagan I mean, still the owns, the, owns the rights to that, I would assume. Uh -huh. But and the, hopefully, I don't know. UHQRs is the licensing. It's not the box and not all the, the extra advertisement and the one extra picture of the tape box. It's the licensing. So, yeah. I mean, it, I would love to get it. I would love to get them for 60 because to me, you know, I mean, the, the box is the box. I just think it should be filled with more cool stuff, like you know, more pictures of the tape boxes or more. Do you more really? Think, do you really? I don't know this. The same I, advertisement every time. The same um, <laughs> UHQR insert, and even all that could fit into anyway. Well, do you yeah, really I think? I don't know the answer to this. I don't what know do you, the answer. Do you think it? it's thirty dollars per record for license? No, no way. I can't believe no, it if it I, is. I, I, I don't know, Mazzy. I don't negotiate it. But Right, um, right. That's my point. Yeah, we I don't I, know. I, but Yeah. It would have to be that to get it up to 150 bucks. Uh, well, I'll point. ask George. That, George, well, is, it, is it? Point. I think the licensing is a lot higher for Steely <laughs> Dan, those first albums, and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, exactly. No, I don't think so. Painful. <laughs> painful. Mike is dashing. Now, 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 now I'm worried I spent too, too much on my Spyro Gyro Nautilus cut for $20. <laughs> Sorry. I, I'm all like, I'm yeah. like, I have this. Oh, man. Okay. That's good. I enjoy it. Don't dash James Spyro Gyro, Mike. Yeah. I feel Are bad you? because, um, who was it? Oh, Marcella is in the audience. She was up in Seattle and she bought that record when she was with me in Seattle. And I just dissed on that, pissed on that record. So. Have you guys seen um, any of the Tone Poets coming down in price? Because I, I picked up um, these two for 25 a piece recently. And that I mean, that's usually what the classic blue notes go for. Not The Tone Poets are usually like around tell, 40. Tell the viewers what you have there. All right. So the Jack Wilson Easterly Wind and Freddie Hubbard Blue Spirits. Both of these are unbelievably great. And yeah. I would I would have put them in my best of 2023, but I didn't get them until late in the year but uh i mean if you're looking for i mean this one has lee morgan on it so if you're fans of that and what i like about both of these is the fact that there's a lot of original a little original material on both of these the freddie hubbard every single track on here is an original track by freddie hubbard so i didn't know if anyone else has seen the prices going down because when you can get a tone poet for what the blue was that through goes, amazon was that through amazon yeah yeah, because I got the Easterly ones for twenty seven at Amsterdam, so ten bucks off or whatever. But you know, the end of the year, I, th I think a lot of labels were just trying to get rid of stock because uh, I think this went out. It's no secret now, but I had a pre order of pre order and upcoming new releases of Four Tone Poets during their thirty percent off sale a few months ago through yep. Blue Note Direct, and they were late. They were everything. All of a sudden, I get an email. 
we're sending you your money back and I'm going to ship your records next week. So I got four tone poets for free because they refunded because they were delayed and the, there was a shit show with the distribution. And I wasn't the only one that got that email. Hmm. They, uh, I just got an email today. They're doing another, I think it's 25% off some anniversary deal for Blue Now, but uh, 85 years. Yeah. Uh, and then they announced the Sonny Rollins uh, today, I think. Cool. The Sonny Ro Rollins. Is it going to be a multi box or some kind? That I don't know. They also announced I'll, that I'll do a, I'll do a compilation scan on... as well. They're doing their compilations again. Hey, look, something's free. <laughs> free. Give away free I, stuff. I, we're even paying the shipping, man. This is a great album. Yeah. But George, we have a it's it. on discount. It's a, it's a huge thing. Yeah. George, your take on things Steve, that have been talked about the last 35. You know what? I walk so. in, I see something, the price tags on it. If I want it, I buy it if I have the funds. Yeah. And when I get it home, I listen to it and I like it or I don't. I'm a simple guy, Steve. So <laughs> how, how is this? This is a good record. Hey, you bought this. <laughs> I would not uh I wouldn't even make my dog listen to that record. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, the, the, I'm, the I'm hatred of Spyro no, Gyro. I'm, I'm just wow, Spyro Spyro Gyro is a is a fine band. It's it's a, it's a you know it's that it's that new agey kind of vibe, isn't it? It's kind of you know smooth it's all jazz. it's chill, it's chill, smooth well, jazz. Is, I would say it's less jazz and more Tangerine Dream without the imagination. Yeah, you know it's it's there was like you know, a new age vibe in the late '80s, right? With like. Uh, Hiroshima, the band, you know, that was like jazz, and then there was like the Kenny G and the David Benoit, and the, yes. you know, the all that stuff, and 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 that that that's kind of actually even way better, David Benoit. <laughs> I don't know. Have you heard that uh, OG pressing of David Benoit's first album? It's, it's not. It's not a pressing. Thing with, with David it's, it's not a pressing. Much better than the you are. <laughs> you are. I mean, I but like I, the Rippingtons. I mean, some people, people. I mean, the Rippingtons are another band. You know, they're like that. They're, you know, like Chick Corea's electric band. You know, so yeah. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all good with all of that stuff. I, I, I think, uh, I think when it comes to the cost of a, of a record right now, I, I know that it seems expensive, but I mean, it costs fifteen dollars for a burrito around here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fifteen bucks for a burrito. And you're uh, in San Francisco or your people. Well, I'm in, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, you don't yeah. matter. You go into Walnut Creek. You could go to Pleasant Hill. You can go to yeah, Colorado. I get it. I get it. It's, hey, if I don't, yeah. It's if I don't get 150, get if I don't get to 150 Star thumbs Star up, I'm going to give away the Spyro driver to someone for free, <laughs> and, 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 and and make them change, make them pay the shipping. That's that's hey, that's. I have a question to, to all you audiophiles here. Uh, Jason mentioned the thing, a tone poets are going pricing down. They're not going to hold value compared to the OGs. Okay. I I'm serious about this. And I, I beat a dead horse and I get mocked for saying this. Do any of you guys buy these records based on what they're going to value? I just, I know it's the music stoop is my mantra, but it, who cares how much your record collection holds value? I think. It, really? well, it feels it feels good to get a good deal and it feels good to know that you bought a record for 10 bucks and it's but that's only 100. the last 10 but, years yeah, or five but years but that's not the reason to buy them you buy them to enjoy right. the music uh clearly and 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 but i mean it's like I, there's those times man when you get a good deal and you go yeah you know that's yeah, great I, you know i've got Absolutely. i've got a I've, I've got a cisco asia down here that's probably worth about 300 bucks and it doesn't sound as good as my original freaking ab's you know asia so it held its value yeah. but it, i don't listen to it ever that's Ever. the thing with a lot of those <laughs> records. It's like really super expensive ones that don't sound as good as the the the, the Smashing Pumpkins, the Melancholy. That new box, that four disc box, is a thousand times better. I will never want to listen to the OG again. But the the OG is like going for fifteen hundred bucks in some cases. Oh yeah, is that the it's Carolina stupid. Cut? Which yeah, one, yeah, yeah it's the yet? the numbered the orange, UK the orange vinyl. Yeah. No, it's it's yeah. black vinyl, but it's it's the right. numbered box. It's just ridiculous, and it's like it doesn't even sound good. But I don't ever plan on selling it. I, I mean, I tried to trade it one time for a couple of OG Beatles, but they wouldn't take it. So the the music comes first, but it's it is interesting to you know dip into discogs and and you know sort on okay, what are my top ten right now as far as value? And then yep. you know surprisingly yeah. that Rhino Cars forty dollar record when it came out, great deal. 
It's like $115 on Discogs right now. It's crazy. Look at San, look at Santana Braxis, the freaking the, the one step, you know, yeah, it's like yeah. a $2,000 record now. It's like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not so much, it's not an investment. It's definitely what, what I buy for is sound quality, first and foremost, right? Yeah. But I'm not going to, yep. I'm not going to go throw the, wec- the record away if it doesn't sound as good. It's got some inherent value. If nothing else, I'd like to trade it for something I do want. So, I mean, yeah, it's it's not the money, but you know, it is the money to a certain extent because I have finite resources and I have finite time on this earth. And so if this thing has some value to it and it will is a vehicle for me to get something else, then yeah, I'll take advantage of that if that's a trade or selling it or whatever. But it's not like stocks or any other asset class, right? But it's here, also here. it's something that has a value. And if you're keeping right. up with discogs, then you're aware of it. So it's, it's not disagreeing with the music, but I'm just saying you can't ignore the value or you should. And that's something I'm actually doing this year. I'm getting, I'm purging some of those things that I don't, that, that I, I know for a fact that is not my favorite. And I'm, I'm, right. I'm, I'm finally letting go and saying, Hey, I don't need to have that, you know, that Cisco Asia. I don't need to have that stuff while it still has its value and doesn't tank at some point. You know, so yeah, that's one yeah. thing that I'm going to do in 2024 is going back to what we originally talked about. But we all care about well, the, we all care about what it sounds like, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can I? I want to. I want to show a record that uh, I was reminded of this record because of the jazz bums the other night last week, uh, because you know Audio Quest, Joe Harley's label in the 90s and stuff. There's a record I didn't realize it was on Audio Quest, and it's a record I've been looking for on and off, but not seriously. And the only reason I wanted it because it's a Ry Cooter connection, and it's this Terry Evans, and it came up when the Jazz Bones were showing Audio Quest, and I I had no idea that this record was produced by Joe Harley in '95, and Ry Cooter's all over it. Uh, Terry Evans was one, him and Bobby King were the backup singers with Ry throughout the '70s and '80s on tours. Great soul record, Ry Cooter all over it. And I sent a picture of it to Joe uh, when I got it. I finally found it. It's like, it goes for about 60 up, 60. To, so it's not cheap, but it's an amazing uh, audio file record, literally. But I bought it because of the sound. And he was telling me stories about how Rye would mic his amps and didn't use pedals and some special things he did. And uh, he died about five years ago. But fantastic record that I had no idea was, quote, an audio file record. And I just ordered the second one, which is only on CD. And there was a Telarc one he also did, which is only on CD of Bobby King that uh, Joe Harley, I believe, worked on. But uh, this is kind of like I didn't realize that I had missed this so much. And uh, music's be wonderful. Audio Quest. You guys, any of you guys collect or buy any Audio Quest? Mostly I've some, ca- some cables by them. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah, quite a few cables. I don't pick up. I have one audio quest record only. Yeah. yeah. They sound really good. Yeah. Hey, I've got Aggie one. 88, your 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 rainbow avatar is smoking, by the way. I want to hear I've from Mike Amazon, Mike. Amazon tip. Okay. Real real quick. So Just um, I got I got a Amazon card for uh Christmas and I started looking around and uh I've had this record on my radar for a long time. James Taylor, October Road. 2002 only time it's ever been on vinyl it was an analog spark and uh when i i did a video i I featured this in a recent video there were there's there were 10 copies on amazon for 47 dollars go on discogs they're 75 dollars it's only like one seller when i did the video i i looked earlier today there's only three left and this is a kevin gray double lp double 33 really good sounding record you know one of the later period james taylor records that's great and i think it was originally i, I used to love the cd i used to play it all the time but why anyway. is james taylor okay and not spyro gyro that's what i want to know it was a lukewarm tip if anyone is interested it's a great james record. taylor that's a great i have a cd of that it's a yeah james it's taylor does not even compared to dead spyro stock Gyro. from analog spark which was a great kind of boutique label that's no longer with us they did a nice cranberries reissue, also yeah. in Analog Spark, and they did uh, they did Blind Melon. Uh, they did I think Soup and the first right, one. right. And the only aud- the only Audio Quest record I have, Mazzy, is actually by James Taylor brother. It's Livingston Taylor. He had oh, yeah. an album out on Audio okay. Quest Music. I didn't know hmm. that. Okay. Yeah, I think I have it back here still somewhere. I bought it back in the nineties. 
Yeah. And the best analog spark uh, or the best meatloaf batter to hell SACD or best remastered would have been the yes, analog spark one that uh, mm -hmm. I, it was Ryan K. Smith that did it. It does say Kevin Gray on the back, but it's Ryan Smith. And it's by far the best sounding batter to hell I've ever listened to. Mm. So there you go. Analog spark. Who haven't heard from, from Michael T. I haven't heard from you for a while. More listening, more buying, more doing other things other than vinyl. What do you think? What's going on? Uh, well, like, like I said, I, I, I've been doing what other, a couple of other guys said. I like going to direct stores and finding stuff that I didn't expect to find. Like I, I said, on uh, New Year's Eve day, I decided to go to Portland, and I went to four or five record stores, and I found a second press kind of blue for 25 bucks, uh, really, which is a really good price for a clean second press wow. copy of kind of blue. Uh, but I found a blue note that I wanted, uh, just all kinds of stuff, stuff that I wasn't expecting to find. About a month ago at a different store in Seattle, I found a super clean near mid copy of... Uh, of Highway to Hell from ACDC on Monarch for, for 30 bucks, and it sounds fantastic. Things like that. That's more exciting to me than buying audio file reissues. Now, we're yeah. buying all this stuff. Are we going to have the time? Are we going to spend more time in 2024 actually sitting back and actually listening to the stuff we, we actually collect and buy instead of just looking at it on our shelves, being satisfied, going, oh, my God, look I at all listen, the stuff that I have. I listen to music every day for hours, like me five, six me hours too. a day. Yeah, at least. yeah, I listen to yeah. everything oh. I buy. I clean. I don't stop. Did any? Did anyone else get this? Tell us what it is. Claire Marlowe, let it go. No. Did anyone else? No. Mm -mm. Nope. If I would have gotten this before year end, this would have made my list for the number one, uh, at least my favorite release of 2023. <clears throat> wow. The sound quality on it is un freaking believable unbelievable um every track is just got this you know like you probably you you guys all probably know when you get something special and you put it on and immediately you know that you're like in a whole new level of like quality that's what that record's like um nice. so the and they're only doing 1500 of this which i was really surprised that they're doing a low uh count it's called a one step and i'm not even sure like there's no technical details on what their one step process is, was like on that there's like nothing inside the pamphlet inside but um when you put that on i mean it is it's killer it's unbelievably good and it's from the analog tapes so even though that was originally released i think in 88 or 89 um they uh they do did a two channel mix down from the analog tapes and uh, Bernie Bernie Grunman, uh, to work on that. <laughs> so, and that was I also issued on Real Real, by the way, Jefferson. Oh, Real really? Real is fifty. It's one thousand five hundred. <laughs> Jeez, is it really? Yes. <laughs> wow. Nice. Yeah, um, I'll have to. I'll definitely have Can to listen to that one. First. Put that one up again, Nathan. Can you show it, Nathan. Now, Marcella, you. Uh, Marcella is a view. I met her when she was in Seattle. She's uh, in the Netherlands, right? Uh, and she built her own speakers. You should see these speakers she built if you follow her on her That's channel. Awesome. Amazing. What's like, Marcella's channel? Is it Marcella I Vinyl Forever? Um, I don't have it here. I can send it to you later, but I don't have it like go. handy. But okay, we'll have a look at her channel. Click on her thing there and what are, what, are, what are we at for thumbs up does no one want this record am i gonna have to just what are we at for thumbs up they Can want the spyro it? gyro we're we're at 112 a minute ago we're at, i mean uh, you, you guys if i don't get to 150 someone's what's getting the spyro, someone's getting this i'll take the spyro yeah. gyro Spyro, this is a good, this sounds pretty good. For the spyro i can gyro. i can see a theme night on my stream coming up about freaking spyro gyro and all I'm, the other bands like i'm them for starting you, I'm this is great you. this is steely down without lyric without any vocals it's fantastic come on yeah but what's first as great as yacht music, rock shaming and now it's smooth jazz. You know, I like as, 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 as great as Steely Dan's music is. I love uh, his Donald Fagan's lyrics. They're smart. They're funny. They're quirky. So I, I'm a fan of Steely Dan and, and Steely Dan ain't no yacht rock. I'm sorry. There's supposed to be another uh, a new yeah. Donald Fagan solo sometime, hopefully later this year. But do you think like Daddy that, don't work in that New York City no more? That kind of no that one that owns a yacht <laughs> has Steely Dan playing on their yacht. Come on, <laughs> no, they have Christopher Cross playing. Steely Dan is not yacht rock. Yeah, or Pablo no, Cruz. FM, FM, FM. I beg to differ. FM is a yacht rock. Song I think for we're. Sure. I think we're, we're working. I think we're working to the towards the point where Steely Dan is going to be just as, you know, 
untalkable about as the Beatles <laughs> very <laughs> soon. We're, we're, we're already I mean, there. In, in my, in, <laughs> in my circles, there. like in recording studios and live sound installations, you don't even want to talk about Steely Dan because someone's going to go, oh, let's put on Peg and check the system. I love I, I I've I heard love that song that so many times. I love that song he did with Steve Hoffman, how he was kind of like, well, Steely Dan's oh, aren't this not value. recorded that well. I was surprised by that when Steve Hoffman, when, it, when he was on. It, that's exactly, I, I got that here too. You know, you need to get Steve Hoffman needs to come on again. He was so great on your thing. I mean, he loosened up and he was great. And, th you know, there's a thread going on the Hoffman forums on that. I think it's all right. But, but at one point, he came on and said, I can't believe 8,000 people want to watch this thing. <laughs> I think it was good. I, I think he, he I, maybe he he seemed surprised, but I thought he well, was yeah. genuine. Well, what did you guys think of all that? Like, what did I you think of that it. interview? It was, fun to listen. it was fun to watch. That hey, uh, by the way, just to, to done. I really loved it. Just yeah. to clarify over here to the chat, Spyro Gyra is, is is fantastical musicians playing really intricate music. No one's really slagging them off. It's that kind of thing. <laughs> Except for where me. He, it, they're, 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 you know. good, this is a good album. You know, if you like, if you like Steely Dan, you're gonna like yeah. this. And even Mazzy would admit that the musicianship on Spyro Gyro Records is Absolutely. phenomenal. It's by far. And Spyro Gyro yeah. doesn't like prog either. So I mean, they're, and Spyro you know, that is not true. Gyro is named after <laughs> was named after a um, a green algae apparently. There, there you go. <laughs> What do we have for thumbs up? Are we giving this record away? Or are we giving the Spyro Gyro away? Come on, guys. Come on, dude. Yeah. In the name of Spyro Gyro. Thumbs Come up. Come on. Jeez. 120 only. 30 away. We've got nine minutes to go. Ridiculous. No one wants free records. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm definitely, I mean, as Canadian, I know we. I've talked about this. I got to be careful what I'm buying. I mean, the Gaucho I pre-ordered, and I pre-ordered it from a Canadian distributor. With, with when the smoke clears, it's still three hundred dollars for a one for one album. So you got to be careful from a Canadian perspective of what you're doing. That's for sure. But I think I think we're going to get a new fan base. Maybe we'll do a full episode on Spyro Gyro. <laughs> and and smooth jazz in general will go over very well. I think. Yeah. yeah. Now is a three blind mice part of that collection? Could be. Could be. Michael, do you want to add anything? I was just thinking that if you did a spiral gyro episode, we'd all sit in hot tubs or be in a yacht, one or the other. Pina coladas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna show a record. No one's showing music. No, not many people showing music. Now this uh that wasn't the theme. That wasn't this the theme. Bert Jantz. Yeah. Bert Jantz uh, was a member of Pentangle, him and uh, John Renborn. Great albums. Uh, What's great the name of the album? Uh, this is When the Circus Comes to Town. I think it only came out on CD originally. Earth Records has been issuing his records over the last decade or so. They're distributed in the States by Light in the Attic. And um, it's just a like, it seems like it's 130, 120 to gram. It sounds really good, excellent. One of his, I think it's his nineteenth album, uh, but it's it's really his records sound really good. They're well recorded. He died maybe ten years ago or so. A great British from the British folk uh, revival in the late sixties, played all the way up to his death. Uh, really good, reasonable price records. Not this audiophile, but this whole series they've been doing on these Bert Jans records, Earth Records are really fantastic. So just great music and just really nice sounding records. It was That's $150 cool. too much, Leland. It's 150 too much. So, yeah. Did that actually happen? $150 for a, now, a sealed, no? Sealed doors ERC? That's What about the big uh, quote one step that Impex put out today? And I haven't heard it. You know, I like the record. I don't need to get like a what two or three LP set of, of Jennifer Warren's singing Leonard Cohen. However, that is a fantastic record but the original sounds really good this is this ultimate impacts edition anyone heard about it or heard yeah it? but it, their prices like went up on the on the impacts because they're they think it's now at like 160 or something wow. like that for the wow. for the general i'm just Warren. curious just, i'm like, not gonna get it yeah that, that's one that I, did, I haven't bought because i already have an original i have the yeah. classic records issue rock the house yeah. and i also have the uh, impact so i'm not gonna buy and how much one. better can it really yeah. be i mean <laughs> yeah. Yeah. exactly I'm just curious because I saw I, I saw Mike Ingroove show show it yesterday. Uh, remember that Neil Young album Lenoise from like ten or twelve years I ago? I have that. That's great. Um, 
I, I saw that tour and Bert, he had Bert Janch uh, open for him. Uh, that was oh. really cool. Good show. Wow. Yeah. Now, I have yeah, a, the, the vinyl. Uh, that, that should come out. I guess the next batch, <clears throat> he needs to put out Sleeps with Angels, which oh, yeah. is my favorite of that period of, uh, of Neil Young. What a great record. I mean, Neil, that's is the that thing. Is that the Pearl Jam record? No, that's Mirror Ball. No, that's Mirror Ball. That, that yeah. needs to come out. That goes for yeah. two, three hundred. Yeah. Sleeps with Angels was around that time, right? Like right after that or something like yeah, that? It was like 93 94, or 94. Yeah. I think. Yeah. It is okay. so good. It's just a great record. Yeah. He he announced that he's got another another lost album coming out in February. <laughs> Marcella, amazing. because that's that period people weren't buying a lot of records and it hasn't been reissued yet. That's the only reason. You know, but Neil Young is putting those boxes together, so it's gonna come out in the next year mm. or two. So uh, you know, don't buy it, don't overprice it. Somebody uh com- I, I uh featured that last box with Ragged Glory in it and someone's pissed off. A lot of people are like, hey, I- why can't I just get? I just want ragged glory, you know, and that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing pressing. But you know, box. I had the other two records also, the originals. Yep. The box ones sound better because they extend. They instead of a one record or whatever, it goes to two records, or it's yep. better. So if you're pissed off because you don't want to buy that record again, sell your originals. The, that's an example. Yep. Well, the, yeah, the, the rest of that there. box is awesome, too. It's just with the yeah. exception of Ark, which, you know, is is nothing yeah. you ever want to listen to. If you can. Well, it's it, like but... a Sonic Youth record. You know? you'll listen <laughs> to it once. And then yeah. Once yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. when Sonic yeah, Youth opened terrible. up uh, that tour for Neil Young and half the audience would walk out during the opening act. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Well, but you remember it's that not for Arc everybody. Weld, the Ark Weld box set that came out with that when it was originally released, there was. Well, which is the live music movie that Jim Jarvish worked on, and then Ark was like the separate CD, and everybody had to have that box set with Ark yeah. in it. And God, it was awful. You just didn't need it. But the, everything else in that, uh, it's what it's. Um, uh, what's the freedom. record? Freedom. Yeah, freedom and 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 Weld and yeah, Ragged, uh, Glory. Ragged Glory. I mean that that's that's a good bang for the buck box right there. For sure, yeah, for sure. Now, for sure. does Neil Young or um, what's that other band? Um, King Gizzard put more records out weekly. <laughs> King Gizzard. Okay. King I think Gizzard. King Gizzard. Was, out the other. I action. can't believe when I go to the store when I see like a, like a new box set and a box set and every other week, seriously, a King Gizzard record. It's crazy. And I've never well, heard are they that good? I guess I need to listen to them. At some Aren't point. they kind of jammy? Grateful Dead, psychedelic. Yeah, they're mix. a jammy. Yeah. Okay. It's amazing that they, do they have their own pressing plan? How do they do it? <laughs> well, how many freaking records did the Grateful Dead put out? On but top the of Dead, all their, I mean, um, people, a lot yeah. more tapes than records, a lot more live shows than studio yeah. records. That's and, what I mean, though. That's like, the best way to experience them as live. So, yeah. well, that's yeah, a good example of the plangent process we talked about a few months ago. The Dead live records that go through the plangent process are fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why more people don't use the planship process. I mean, especially now that the whole digital is out of the bag or whatever. I mean, if you're going to include the digital step to not include the planship process. Yeah, that's a good one. I haven't cracked into that one yet. That was the record store day, right? This is good because this is the fourth night. Now they're all available. Four boxes, four nights, 1969 nice. at Fillmore West. These are the recordings that made it onto Live Dead back in the day. Well, Jefferson, yeah, all that sounds- wow, all that wow and flutter makes it sound, you know, old school. You know, you know, I got the who's, I got the who's yeah. next, I got the who's next plangent, and it was, it did not, it did not knock my socks off. I, mean, yeah, I, I, I was not yeah. blown away I, I, by, I by, by the who's next, and I was, I was hoping to be. I was literally going, yeah, I, was I was ready. Yeah. You know, I just want to so. come back to what Muzzy was saying about the, the the previous to that release. I don't have in front of me the. But the RFK Stadium, that oh, yeah. that release, um, when they do um, whatever the last song is, is it Dark Star? Or it's the one that the Allman Brothers are jamming on. But Phil oh, drops um. some bombs there that will just shake the room. Shake the room. And uh, and Planet Process went through that, and it put they put that back onto the vinyl. It was amazing. I mean, the, yeah. the, 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 <laughs> the, the high res shook the room. The vinyl did, too. So... <laughs> That you know that can be done. You can get that kind of low frequency on <laughs> vinyl now. So why not? Are they? Why are they not doing it? So I don't know. Well, there's that. that 
Yeah. I'm hoping at 45 funny. RPM, the Spyro Gyro box comes out wax. That would be great. Sorry, I just saw that comment. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got that spiller. Are they going to talk uh, that on Jazz Bums tonight? The they better. Gyro they better. I, it's, I don't it's know. I, I, got, I, got a new, I got a new rant for next, next panel. That's for sure. Did you do okay, it? I did I miss your I rant, Patrick? Did we even do a prattle? No, we didn't. Just hang on. Put that up. Okay. I'm ready. Put that to up. Go. Oh, sorry. Jefferson. To, oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Analog release of 2023. Oh, that's the tape, around. right? The tape, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Gillian Welch, yeah. This is the best thing. This is the best sounding thing I've heard in years and years and years. It wasn't cheap, but my God, this this sounds like they're literally in the room with you. The tape was done really well. The packaging's great. I mean, that's a box set that's worth the money. Anyway, and that's and that's that Jill, and that's and that's Jillian Welsh. If the viewers didn't know, it. Jillian Welsh and, and Dave Rollins doing the Harrow and the Harvest. Yeah, it's just wonderful stuff. So, so I don't know. I guess we're giving away the Spyro Gyro. No one wants this record. I'm at a, we're at 131 thumbs up. So it is what it is. We're at the top of the hour here. So Patrick uh, has to close out with a rant, though. Okay, maybe this will bring it up. So this we need 20 thumbs up. Hang on, Patrick. <clears throat> It is up to you. You can do it. The PB doll prattle. Okay. It's up to you. Go. Here we go. Full, so, full, full screen. So today I'm taking aim at you, musicians. So musicians <laughs> who don't give a shit about sound quality, but will spend eight hours getting that perfect fucking guitar tone to play a one night show. So, so I have musician friends. I work for bands and, and they literally don't care what their albums sound like. They will sit there, but, but they go to they do one show and they'll literally spend hours on their guitar tone and shit. They go to the studio, they make a record, and they don't give a shit what it sounds like. They, they could care less, and that's what's gonna live forever. The stuff that you make in the studio that you release on physical media is gonna live forever. That one show you do that night, people are gonna go and forget about it. This is a new record that came out by an artist, I'm not gonna say who it is. This is this is the waveform of that. See that? There's, there's, wow. there's no dynamics there. Nothing. Is, all right? And, and I, 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 I love the music on this. The music was great, but it ruins it. I can't listen to this shit. Don't so this talk is Danzig. about your frog friends like that. This yeah. is Danzig. Look, this, this is not like you know James Taylor. This is freaking Danzig. <laughs> look at the, that. Look at the dynamic like range on cardiogram. this. Look at this. You know, so... so <laughs> This is this is a case of a musician that actually has control over everything, and they just say, I don't give a shit, or they have a bunch of people hanging around them going, oh, that sounds great, that sounds great, all these yes people that are too scared to tell them that it sounds bad, they sit there and go, oh, that sounds phenomenal, and I've seen it, I've watched people do it, and these guys eat it up, and they go, oh, okay, we'll just let it go, you know, so musicians care about what you release to the in the physical media as much as you do what you play that one night i beg you please you know don't give us this shit anymore no we don't need it that's it patrick i think you owe it to the musicians of the world to tell that person tell it's that not just band. one person it's not just one person though it, I, I can give you a well, million, made that examples, album, a million should... examples of it yeah this guy well you know the guy who put this out is actually in the vinyl community and i really respect him i like him a lot his label put this out so i, I have no desire to throw him under the bus or anything so well that's, somebody wants to do, yeah. send him anonymous send him an anonymous yeah. uh you know but that's, so. of course now he that, knows <laughs> that that's why that's why like diversifying your music interest actually trains your ear to hear things that you're not used to hearing so when you listen to a classical record and then a jazz record and then a pop record your ears are going to pick up on things and be more sensitive to the sounds because you're exposing it to things that it's not used to hearing in different frequencies and different ranges and stuff and that's why i think if you know for all of us in the audiophile community i think your collection deserves to have some diversity to it so that you're hearing different things and you're exposed to different things. Patrick, that is hmm. not Angelo Kelly's record. I know that for a fact. No, no, no. It is not Angelo Kelly's record. <laughs> His record sounds no. very good no. dynamically. I mean, I'll, 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 I'll out the guy. The, the, the guy who put that out, his name is Chris Manning. Um, he's on a He's on a, a No Life Till Metal Records. Um, oh, it's yeah. not a metal album. It's a hard rock record. He's a guitar player from Texas. And the music is really, really good. And there's a lot. People say, you want to listen to new music? Because I, I can't listen to it because it hurts my ears after about five minutes. But there you know? are so good there's a records. Lot, there, there are. There are. But there's a lot of really good music 
that I don't listen to because the format or how it's produced to me, it doesn't sound good, you know? And, and that's just the way it is for me. I can't listen to something that sounds horrible and hurts my ears, no matter how good the song is. Excellent yeah. blues rock, Dave Alvin, yeah. psychedelic. They're playing in San Francisco and Portland and Seattle the next couple of weeks. Second album by them, an offshoot of the Blasters. And it's very much like Super Session and uh, Paul Butterfield Blues Band and that kind of Chicago and East Coast psychedelic L.A. blues with Mike Bloomfield. It's so good. This sounds great. A lot of soaring guitars, but great dynamics. But conversely, on that on that on that record label, they actually put out the first Brother Kane album, which is a Southern rock band from the from the early '90s. Really great band, phenomenal band, um, and it sounded great. So it's not like everything on that. It's just that one artist who probably had control of everything. The the Brother Kane was done in the '90s, and they put that out, and it sounds great. So, George, we uh, we have full confidence that your next record is going to sound amazing. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad that you have that confidence. Um, you know, it, I, I could, I could, I, something that, that Patrick is talking about here is uh, something that pretty much made me semi retire from mastering records for people in the, you know, mid 2000 aughts into the tens, you know, they, the client was more interested in how loud the record was in comparison to other records than whether or not it sounded good. And I, and, and I, and I say this to people and I think people think that I'm exaggerating and I'm not exaggerating at all. I mean, I, it's, I'm, I'm underplaying how rampant it was literally every single record that I was making. I was being, I, I called Joe Ciccarelli on the phone and apologized for what I was doing to his record. <laughs> Seriously, because the artist was forcing me to go louder, louder, louder. And I said, you know, I don't even feel comfortable with this. And as a joke, I <laughs> slammed it with the hard ceiling limiter, ran it into a second hard ceiling limiter and slammed it again. He probably loved it. And I sent it to him and they said, this is perfect. <laughs> oh, God. And I, as I was sending it to him, I, I was going, this will teach them. You know, they, they'll stop asking <laughs> for this now when they hear this. Perfect. And at that point, I had to call the producer and say, hey, man, it, there was nothing I could do, you know. And then what was also happening was people were hitting the limiter on the stereo bus of the mix session. So when you would send it for mastering, it was already like that. Kind of like vapor and, trails. Yeah, it was it was just and then and then, you know, putting hearts. Then then mastering engineers started asking for stems, meaning proportions of the multi-track so then they could limit each thing individually and then send that into a stereo bus and limit that again it was so completely out of control so if you have a record that somebody makes and it's mostly for digital distribution oftentimes they'll just take that same master and say make a record of it just to get in on the record thing but you know can i respond to this one comment so so I, I'm what's annoying about audio files. I'm not bitching. I'm telling you, I've been around musicians. I've been in the studio with them where they don't give a shit. Okay. It's not like I don't need to ask them. I've been there. I've seen it happen. You know, George can back me up on this. He just did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Safety so, layer. I mean, you know, I'm not an audio file like Patrick. And neither respect. am I. I totally agree with what Patrick says. I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm not, I don't consider myself to be an audiophile, but I mean, working in a recording studio, it's like everything you do is basically audiophile. You're not, you know, you're trying to record something in the best way possible, yeah. but oftentimes the, the self-sabotaging that an artist does, you know, in a recording studio for whatever reason, I've said, I've, I've worked on so many records where you're just watching and you're going, why are you doing this? You know, I had an, there, I had a, is I had there an artist no gatekeeper anymore, George. Is there nobody, is there no label, no, no gatekeeper anymore? This, the is second, that? the second that the tools for making records got into the hands of everyday people, <laughs> it was all gone. It was over because, you know, phrases were co-opted and turned into other phrases The the, you know, using the jargon that, that lets people, you know, it's like, if you're on a plane and you're talking to the flight tower, you better have the language together or else it's going to turn out bad. <laughs> And, and again, when you're making a record, no one's hopefully going to get hurt. But you when know, you start, you know, interchanging phrases and, and 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 just making up new words that don't really have any specific meaning, you don't have a communication level, and then everything just 
falls apart and people just do whatever they can do you know you know this is uh, the last temples album they're a british band uh, they started out kind of like the early who then they got more electronic and stuff but this is the album that came out this past year and i, I really wanted to include in my best of and i didn't because it was produced by sean ono lennon and it's all everything is at a certain peak i guess I, you could describe it better if you heard it and i just wanted some dynamics and things and 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 and, and actually sean does pretty well on the lennon his father's uh records and maybe that's the way it's recorded they just didn't do it i just was so disappointed great music and stuff but it's just a squashed thing and i still like it but it could have been so much better that's the disappointment it, it what coulda shoulda woulda you know temples uk I got some great news. I got some originals. I got some great news. I don't have to give this one. I don't. I don't have to give this one away, guys. We're we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it here. I can give it away. We we hit 152 thumbs up. Nice. So I'm going to ask the birthday boy to pick someone from the audience who's been commenting, uh, get their name, announce that, and then. I hope it goes uh, to a jazz. I hope it goes to a jazz bum. Well, so just pick a random person, huh? Can we give away the Spyro Gyro to the wax? Yeah. He'll probably, he'll probably sell it in his auction when he gets it. I don't right. know how to do that. We'll see it tomorrow. God, you're, you're, this is like you playing God, Tim. I've got are, you picking, are, you, are, you, are you picking or what? Or somebody picking? I've got, what it, we I've got it picked. Um, Oaken Shield 69. Oh, there Ooh. you go. Look oh, it. the shipping's going to cost you on that one. <laughs> Why? Where's it from? Where does he live? No, no, I think Oakenshield's in the U.S. I, I, I think so. <laughs> so Oaken, is it Oakenshield? Sorry, Oakenshield 60... 69, I think. 69. Yeah. He's, he's, in okay. the, he's in the caverns of Kazadoom. Well. So in my on my profile of my YouTube, if you click on my profile, my email is there, Steve Westman at rocketmail.com hit me up with an email and we'll get your details to send you that record so congratulations i really i really want it. this is a great act great record you guys you'll enjoy it so awesome really thank good. you guys and then yeah. we're going to do a full <laughs> review of spyro gyro as well i think this cut as well i think i might have to do that tonight <laughs> but um we've gone over i went over because i wanted to obviously give this record away Monday, January 8th, 1 o'clock, I'm having Patrick Milligan on to do the announcement of Rhino High Fidelity the next two um, issues, one rock, one jazz. Did we That's start drinking a lot before of fun. the stream or after the stream? What's, the, what's, your, uh, what's your thought on that? Mazzy. It's a good – I know the choice, and it's mm -hmm. a good choice. I think everyone will be very pleased. It's not something you'll expect. And I think it will do very well. And if you, you know, we want something, we talk about diversifying your collection. This is a good way to diversify. That's your like collection. a blind date that has good personality. Is what. There you go. Like. <laughs> <laughs> after after his live stream with Patrick uh, is my uh, review of that. So we'll switch his so, channel. So at two o'clock, uh, two o'clock uh, PST. Yeah. yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you. It was awesome. We went over time. We gave the record away. So next next week we'll do a full review of Spyro Dryo's career and records and, and, and sound reviews. So that'll be amazing. Which box says. <laughs> there you go. Thank you guys. Bye. 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 Look at, at Mazzy with the fireworks.